Hello and welcome back to South Carolina's installment of Farm Bureau's Voices of Agriculture. I'm your host, Reggie Hall. The National Wild Turkey Federation, or NWTF, is located just about 30 miles north of Augusta, Georgia, in Edgefield, South Carolina. The NWTF has a lot in common with Farm Bureau. Both are grassroots membership organizations. Both work to educate their members about their missions and purposes. And both call on their members to help policymakers understand the importance of protecting and preserving the great outdoors. And don't be mistaken by their name, the National Wild Turkey Federation, with 230,000 members across North America, is involved in much more than just preserving the wild turkey. A major focus of the NWTF is to attract young people and to educate them about the role of hunters and outdoors people and the role they play in conservation. George Thornton is the organization's CEO. We think the youth are everything. Uh, we are shifting uh, our emphasis somewhat with the successful reestablishment of the wild turkey to focus more on what we call uh, the hunting heritage side of our, our mission. And hunting heritage is really about recruitment of uh, new hunters, uh, principally young people, but people, uh, maybe uh, middle-aged people, young people, from young adults from urban environments and suburban environments who have not had a chance to grow up in a family that uh, was outdoors. And if we're going to have an educated public that can uh, appreciate our national and state parks, can appreciate private woodlands, uh, and can make decisions that will influence public policy going forward, then we've got to find a way to get them outside at an early age. They don't have to be hunters. Uh, they may be hikers, they may be bird watchers, they may be campers, they may be rock climbers. Uh, but one of our primary objectives is to get young people out so they understand the glory of, of this wonderful resource that we have. In addition to running outreach programs across the country for young people, called the Jake Program, the NWTF also designs programs especially for the disabled and for women. Teresa Carroll is the program coordinator for the Women and Outdoors program. Ladies will come for a day or a weekend, it's mostly a daily event, and there will be a multiple array of classes for them to choose from, anything from archery to shotgunning, um, kayaking, canoeing, that sort of thing, and they rotate through these classes. So a lot of women either come and enjoy a sport that they're already interested in or try something new, which we always like that part. Now that the turkey population has been re-established across the country, the NWTF spends a lot of its time on conservation efforts. We have a new generation obviously coming around that we want to introduce um, the hunting sport to them and even if they don't move forward to become hunters as long as they understand the role that hunting plays in conservation and that speaks for all of our outreach programs that's what we want to do or I would encourage people of all ages to get involved um, our youth program of course is 17 and younger our women's program is 14 and older for ladies um, but one of the things that continues to amaze me and inspire me I think is seeing older ladies get out and get involved and not allowing their comfort zone to kind of keep them boxed in to trying something new. So that's one of the things that I like. I also like the fact that people like the lady that I mentioned um, is she's wanting to get involved in hunting. So you're never too old to try something new. The National Wild Turkey Federation was founded in 1973 by a few people who recognized the turkey population had declined to near extinction. Immediate efforts began by those early founders to restore habitat and to repopulate the country with the wild game. And there's a great historical basis for that being our brand, and that is the wild turkey was almost extinct by the 1930s. And had there been an Endangered Species Act at that time, it certainly would have been on it. And that was due to deforestation, urbanization, market hunters, uh, all that type of thing. Uh, Poor or no game laws would have been another reason. Uh, the Turkey Federation uh, was formed in 1973 and initiated a trap and transfer program in the early 80s. And that program uh, has actually trapped and relocated 200,000 turkeys around North America. And through that program of putting breeding animals in virtually every 
niche, every habitat niche, uh, we have turkey populations of over seven million now, about the same level that it was, was at at the time of discovery. The important thing about uh, the turkey is it's a symbol for a healthy habitat. If you have wild turkeys on your property, then you know you're doing the right thing for quail, for songbirds, for white-tailed deer, for foxes, for bunny rabbits. Um, and uh, so it's a great symbol uh, that, that we like to honor. NWTF biologist Dr. James Earl Kenner has been with the organization for more than 30 years and has witnessed the national population grow from almost no turkeys to a wild turkey population in almost every state. And even though the population is back to where it was when turkeys were first discovered, challenges remain. The challenges the wild turkeys facing across the country is habitat loss. That's the biggest and major thing. We have pretty well put turkeys in all the places that will support wild turkeys, in the east in particular. There are a few places still in the west. But when you're looking at uh, the expansion of uh, communities, looking at getting into the urban interface, if you will, uh, it really restricts a lot of things you can do from management like prescribed burning. This is where some of the wildfires that we read about all the time occur. It's because people are living out in the habitat and that's the biggest uh, thing that's facing not only wild turkeys but really wildlife in general. Right. And as we pointed out earlier in the show, there are a lot of similarities between the National Wild Turkey Federation and the Farm Bureau Federation, including the fact that the vast majority of wildlife habitat is managed by farmers. The majority of all the wildlife that we have in this country is found on private lands, whether it's on farms or hobby farms or state and federal lands. So, you know, you really have to look at uh, the total picture of where this land is, but in the future of wildlife in this country is dependent upon farmers, particularly in how they deal with their lands and what's going to provide for wildlife along with the commodity that they may be trying to manage. Farmers are the true stewards of the land. I also believe that hunters are the true conservationists of the land. But farmers own their land, they work their land, um, they have to be good stewardships because uh, they're, they're, they're really uh, um, leaseholders, if you will, uh, for the future generations. And uh, I've never met a farmer who wasn't deeply passionate about the health of his fields and his forest and his streams. And if they're doing the right things to manage erosion control and put in fallow crops, et cetera, then they're doing a lot of good things for conservation as well. Now that we've got the restoration of the wild turkey basically finished, we've got to now work to maintain all of this success. If we take it for granted, we're going to lose it. And so looking at hunter access, preserving habitat for the future, maintaining an opportunity for people to be able to go manage this land and to keep it in a state where we'll have good wildlife values, good timber harvest, good timber management so that we've got the timber industry for the future. So the, the actual farmers and the people will lay a major, major role in making sure that we have that for the future. It's imperative that we do that. When we continue, we'll take you on a tour of one of the nation's largest and best managed turkey museums. We'll also deep fry a domestic bird without any oil, and we'll introduce you to one of South Carolina's young turkey producers. All that and more when Farm Bureau's Voices of Agriculture continues. Hello and welcome back to South Carolina's installment of Farm Bureau's Voices of Agriculture. I'm your host, Reggie Hall, from the South Carolina Farm Bureau Federation. We're talking turkey, domestic and wild, during this episode and hope that you'll learn something about both. While at the National Wild Turkey Federation headquarters in Edgefield, South Carolina, we met Christine Rolka, their Director of Education. She reminded us of yet another similarity between the NWTF and Farm Bureau. The NWTF educational programs are very similar in nature to Farm Bureau's Ag in the Classroom program. We have programs geared to schools for K through 12. 
Um, we're, we're aware of what their curriculum needs are and we've managed to tailor our programs to address those curriculum needs while they're here. So this is a very entertaining place to be, but it's also a very educational place to be. We also educate educators so that they can then go back into their classrooms, their own museums, nature centers or visitor centers and offer some of the same types of programming that we do. One of the one wonderful things about the wild turkey is they're, they're now in every single state except one. So they're very relevant, not just here, but to other uh, states and areas across the country. Um, for adult visitors, we offer a wonderful guided tour uh, if they request one, and we always recommend it. There's nothing like a guided tour through the museum, but they're also welcome to walk through on their own and enjoy it as well, and to explore our uh, trail system outside too. That trail system is part of a 100-acre outdoor education center. Inside the NWTF headquarters, just off I-20 north of Augusta, Georgia, you'll find the 7,200-square-foot Winchester Museum that greets more than 10,000 visitors a year. The museum also has a presence at the Virginia Museum of Natural History in the Living Off the Land exhibit. Welcome to the Winchester Museum. This is where we bring school groups, visitor groups of all ages, and probably the first distinction we, we make is between wild and domestic turkeys. The wild is a totally different guy. There are five subspecies, and we talk to visitors about the differences between each of them. These are actually gobbling listen cones. Visitors of all ages enjoy these. You hear the gobble? This is a Bell Jet Ranger helicopter, and what visitors can do, they could actually experience a prescribed burn flight mission on this. If you like the great outdoors and want to know more about the wild turkey, I invite you to stop by the Wild Turkey Complex in Edgefield, South Carolina. I guarantee you'll walk away learning something new. If you can't make it to South Carolina, log on to their website, nwtf.org, to learn more about membership, outreach programs, and more.